Good evening guys, this is Lepin and doing another video for you and everything. So in this video, we're going to talk about events, what to do, what not to do and everything as far as like, you know, what would be smart. This game you could go through and you could play every single event and you could do well in every single event. But there are some that are just not worth it. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to keep my like camera or like my phone about as zoomed in as I possibly can. And we're going to try and get it to where you guys can see this halfway decently. And I'm going to do that. And then we'll do a little bit of this. Whoa. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. Okay, so with different events, as far as what works, what doesn't work. If you're playing on a really, really cheap budget, then there are only really like four events that you really need to be playing. And even then, you got to choose when exactly you can play them. So, like, what I would suggest is marking it down on your calendar as far as, like, you know, have a calendar, have it to where, like, hey, I want to play this at this time on this day. I'm going to need to save up this amount of money in order to be able to spend onto this and everything. And you basically go through and you plan it on out. I know that's a very adult thing to do as opposed to the childish way of like, oh, this event popped up. I'm going to just play it. You know, oh, I ended up spending a few hundred dollars. Now I can't spend any more. Okay, I'll just sit out the rest of the stuff. That doesn't work very well. When you're going through and playing this game, you have to target what exactly you want to do and when. So what I would advise in this video and everything like that is basically pick out when i'm going through these events what works for you what you need because what one person needs is probably going to be different from what another person needs so i'm going to go through the uh like different events on my main account and then i'm going to show you the events on the beowulf account because there will be some that will pop up over there that you don't see over here but they are going to be events that will pop up on your main level account from time to time all right, so the very first one that basically is on here is Ragnarok. Ragnarok is my personal favorite. And the only reason why is because of the fact that it has so many good prizes that it basically offers you. So with Ragnarok and everything, and I'm going to quickly go through these events so that this way, like, we don't go too far in detail. When you fight in Ragnarok, there are two different monsters. You got the snake, and then you also have the wolf. So... German Dur, or whatever the heck his name is, which is the snake. And then you have Fenrir, which is the wolf. Now, the wolf will give you valor points when you fight it. And you also have prizes that you get from it. The prizes aren't as good as the snake, but you do get valor points from going through and fighting it. On the snake, unfortunately, when you fight it, you get absolutely no valor points from whenever you attack it. Yes, I said that correctly. You get no valor points from going through and attacking this. But the key thing about the snake is that the prizes that it gives you are kind of essential in order to help you out. So let me go through and show you what some of the prizes are for this. And granted, I've done an entire video over Ragnarok, so I'm not going to go very far in depth. But you get a decent idea as far as what it has. So it has valor points that it gives you in, you know, bulk. You also have clan chests that would help out your uh, legendary captains, your epic level captains. This one right here is the most important one. The strength against Fenrir. For when you get up to a higher level, it is a plus 450% strength to your army whenever you fight the wolf. You also have the Scrolls of Triumphal. You have experience that you can add to your uh, to your main hero or any of your captains or whatever. And so for these, you're going through and you're having it to where like, okay, I could get more research done. Okay, I could get my captains leveled up and everything as far as star-wise. I can get more prizes in Triumphal. I can go through and get my hero or my captains leveled up as far as their actual level. This one helps my clan as far as do research. This one's helping my clan. This one's helping me as far as star level for my captains. This one helps me fight the wolf. So you can see the prizes are phenomenal. They also have the dragon orbs, the eyes. They also have the summoning, uh, the elite summoning scrolls. So 
the snake gives you the really, really good prizes. It's the best prizes of any single event. Thus, the snake is well worth it. And then the wolf and everything like that, you still have different things that are very well worth it. Dragon coins, valor, tons of silver. You also have it to where you get you can get speed ups from it. You can get keys from like elven level cities and everything. Epic tar, other keys from uh, elven cities. So instead of having to fight an elven level city and everything where you're probably going to kill a lot of your army off, you can do it for free over here. So if you're on a very, very tight budget and everything, then this event is good for you because you could get the prizes from it that would therefore go through and help you out in the long run. And then it goes on and on as far as the different prizes or whatever. It also has great building supplies that it gives you, rare level tar, common level tar, and speed ups and everything. So whether or not you're talking about the, the wolf or the snake under Ragnarok and everything, both are very well worth it. So that basically covers those. The Triumphal Challenge is something that is my absolute bread and butter. It like is awesome as far as helping you out. Every single day, if you click on the sales portion, there will be a treasure chest that pops up with free stuff in it. And then also you have the free column or free row, uh, either going vertical or horizontal, depending upon if you're playing on the computer versus the phone. And then if you want to spend a little bit more money, this is the most worthwhile thing in the game that you can spend it on, which is the Golden Pass. Or if you have a little bit more money, it's like $90 a month in order to have the free, the Golden, and the Elite level pass. Very, very well worth it. I wouldn't suggest the Seasonal just because of the fact that if you're playing the game halfway decently, you're automatically going to get to level 80. And then after that, you gain these coins that therefore you can use in the shop. But if you're not trying to get this huge level city, you're pretty much going to sell out all the other stuff that you could possibly buy on here. And these shop things are pretty cool as far as it's got like the bubble that you can use for protection. You have it to where you have summoning scrolls, you have speed ups, you have all this different stuff. So this is a very well worth it thing to go through and play and do as far as in order to get your, you know, account a little bit more like flush. All right, so that's that one. Closing the gap, it basically, they tack it on to any time that they know that you're going to be fighting an epic global monster. And this thing works in order to give you scrolls that helps out your triumphal challenge. So it is kind of cool as far as what it does. Granted, I haven't played it that much today just because I'm trying to save my gold for other stuff like Arachne. So that's why I'm saving up my 3.8 million in gold because I always like to have... It's kind of like my bank account. I always like to have money on hand or other stuff on hand so I don't have to worry about what in uh, like in case crap happens. Because sooner or later, crap happens, especially in this game. Pursuit of Evolution and everything, you go through and you fight, and then you could go uh, get some Dragon Eyes out of it. It is a very cool event in order to basically go through and do. So eventually you will need Dragon Eyes or whatever. I would highly suggest that any time that you see Closing the Gap and also Pursuit of Evolution, you make sure and you play whatever epic level monster is attached to those. Okay, Great Hunt. This one is entirely clan-based. Now, my clan, what they're doing is they're waiting until the very end in order to go through and do it the last two and a half hours, which is what we usually do or whatever. But it gives a huge amount of red books or scientific tra uh, tractates. It gives a lot of... Uh, dragon coins, and it gives a lot of clan chests. The problem is, for a smaller level clan, you stand almost no chance of placing in this event. If you're a smaller level clan, don't do this one. If you're a big level clan, you need to make sure that everybody in your clan is actually participating. Then you can go through and compete for the top 100 in the entire world. That would be well worth it. But if your clan is small, ignore the Great Hunt. Just being honest. Immortal Essence is only if your guys are dying and everything like that. And when you're fighting an epic global monster, they could go through and get Immortal Essence out of it. This is a really, really good uh, way in order to get that. And in order to get enough of it to where you're keeping up with it. Like any time that I ever see this event attached to either Ragnarok or Arachne for Immortal Essence, I always play Ragnarok or Arachne whenever Immortal Essence is up. 
because it is definitely costly in order to go through and get your different um, captain sum. Summon Mastery. This is one to where the trick of it is you do not go past 300. So what I do is I do three elite level summons of the times 10. That'll get me to 300 points. And then you can notice that like if I get to 600, then I only get 10 more pieces. But if I got to 300, then I basically have it. Oh, I'm sorry. 15 uh, pieces for getting to 600. It's not worth the jump from the 300 to the 600 that you have to do. Is yes, then I would have to do six elite level summons times 10. And you're going to burn through your summoning scrolls, your elite ones, way too quickly that way. So summon mastery wait for an event that actually has the character or the captain that you want i always use carter for my crypts therefore i want to play i play his event every single time it comes up for summon mastery if it has somebody that you don't really need then don't do elite level summons you can do the one free per day but do not do not do not go through and use all your summoning scrolls when it's an event that is not for one that you need Gold Rush, it's not really worth it to really try and do anything with this. Like, this basically pertains to if you're buying a bunch of packages and everything, then yeah, you're going to do really well in it. So the people that are placing, like this guy from Kingdom 37 or whatever, chances are he probably spent a few thousand dollars today. And what does he get out of it? Well, he gets this nice fancy ring that will go through and add... 100% to his food production and 100% to his silver production. Does he really need it? Eh, I doubt it. And then he also gets 40,000 in dragon coins. Needless to say, guys, this event is not worth it. You can ignore it. Arachne Swarm. Always go through and do it. It does not have great prizes or whatever. The prizes are kind of meh. But... And then, uh, like, the stuff that you go through and claim in here, there's only three things. There's an XP bonus, there is a Valor Points bonus, and then there is the Scrolls of Triumph or whatever in order to help you in the Triumphal Challenge. That's it. The good thing about Arachne, though, you can use three Captains at once in order to go through and fight Arachne. So I put Doria for my Valor uh, bonus, I'll put in um, Hercules, and then I'll put in usually Beowulf or Cleopatra. Now, if you're at a lower level and everything and you don't have some of those people, usually you have Cleopatra. If you don't, it's fine. At least use Doria no matter what. Use Sophia. She's actually pretty good if you have it to where like you want a health level bonus, which I would advise. And then if you do have Cleopatra, like or even if you don't, aim to try and get her as quickly as you possibly can. Cleopatra is very well worth it. Doomsday is absolutely a waste of time. I cannot stress this enough. It does have Immortal Essence in there, and it does have some other things, but the prizes for this are so, so small, and it doesn't give you that much Valor points when you go through and fight him. I would suggest that you skip Doomsday. It's not really well worth it. Ruthless Slaughter is kind of a way of basically like, hey, I want to go through and do this stuff that might end up going through and killing me, but you use silver to revive you as opposed to gold to revive you. So if you have a good amount of silver but you don't have a lot of gold, this is a good event in order to go nuts in because then you could go through and try and like hit that heroic you know monster that you wouldn't have done before, but now it only costs you silver instead of gold. Ancient Treasure, I honestly hate this one. I think that it's an absolutely bogus event. It only is basically good if everybody in the clan can agree upon one thing. If you're not that strong, you do not do anything more than build your temple. Build your temple, put it at the highest level that you're possibly allowed to, given your guardsman level, and then leave it alone and let the strongest players in your clan do it. If you are the strongest player in your clan, then you're going to probably be fighting a lot of temples. But, you know, sorry. Sorry. Trade routes, this is the one to where you go through and you basically buy mercs with using silver. I honestly do not like this. I do not think that it's that great of an event. What I would honestly rather people do is basically concentrate on authority rush in order to be able to get their mercs. 
Rise of the Ancients is basically tied in with the Ancients treasure, where the first day you do the setup. And by the way, there is absolutely nothing that you gain out of this event. The clan gains by you can go through and make the timer longer for the robot when it's there. You can make it to where you can have more robots that show up. And you can also have it to where you gain more valor points from the actual robot. But the first day is totally, utterly worthless. So build your temples. Let the strong players in your clan go through and kill them. Do not have your pride get in the way of it, please. Trade routes for mercs. We already talked about that. Our Rise of the Ancients is basically where this huge robot comes in. I honestly do not think that is that great of an event. You do get some prizes from it. But the amount of prizes that you get and the amount of valor points that you get are not worth it. I honestly do not like this event. I don't think that it's very good for a lot of people to basically go through and do. Because after a while, these robots become so gosh darn powerful that even going through and landing a decent hit to where you can get prizes from it is extremely difficult and extremely costly. This event sucks. Clash of Kingdoms. I don't know why it is that they have an actual event for this because it's been my experience that if people really want to go through and invade you from a higher level kingdom, they're just going to go through and use Arin and or A Y R I N in order to go as their like hero avatar in order to be able to go through and march on your city anyways. I mean, granted, they can't go through and do portals in order to be able to get into your area and then go through and attack you, but Clash of Kingdoms like. People attack all the time. They don't wait for this event in order to go through an attack. And they really don't care about what they attack, whether or not it's somebody that's ridiculously small or somebody that's ridiculously big. They're going to do it anyways. Thirst for Battle. This one sucks unless you are a top 100 player in this game because in Thirst for Battle, it's only really real, it's a worldwide competition and the prizes are so gosh darn small. I mean, if you're looking at this, it's small. It's really pathetic. So it's not really well worth it in order for you to be able to do it. Conqueror's Revival is good. They usually tie it in with uh, Clash of Kingdoms or with um, Clash for the Throne and all. And then that's basically to where if you fight somebody and you die and you have to revive them, then you can possibly go through and out of prizes or out of stuff that you can claim, you get more conquest points. So you're obtaining conquest points and then the prizes are conquest points. So that's kind of nice. Beast Slayer, if you want to go through and fight a lot of epic, or heroic level monsters or rare level monsters, this is a good time in order to do it in. Um, but it's not exactly very easy in order to get top 100, just being honest. So you might want to skip it. Castle Development is only good if you are basically a top 150, top 200 player. Because whenever they do one update to one building in their city... It's worth the equivalent of a low-level player doing their entire city one level. Needless to say, it's much, much more difficult for people that are low on the end of like power to go through and actually place in this one. Therefore, not that great. Scientific process, the exact same thing. One high-level research is worth about 100 of the low-level ones. This one, don't even worry about it. Crypt Raiders is a good excuse for everybody to hit the crypts anyways. Which, if you're like low on tar or you're not really feeling like you have a lot of time in order to play, just sit this one out. Let your other clan members go through and do it. And then they'll go through and give you a ton of prizes from it. Call of Duty, not really well worth it. War Games, not really well worth it. If you're not a top 100 player in the world, this one basically sucks. Officer Academy, exact same thing. Hammer and Anvil. Yeah, if you're making huge level armor and everything, but that's usually top 150 level player. So if you notice, guys, a lot of the events that they go through and they post on here are absolutely dumb whenever you're not a top 150 player. It's great for the high level players, but for the low level players, you don't have to worry about these things. King's Mercy, I'll be honest, I haven't even seen this. Send gold ingots to the Royal Treasury to get tournament points. <laughs> If you're not a top 150 player, your capital is not going to be making that much in gold. Like my capital right now makes 3,600 gold per hour, I think. Most people's, you know, like capitals only make maybe 60 per hour. 
200 per hour, 1,000 per hour, you'd have to go through and burn everybody else's city down in order to go through and try and steal their gold ingots. And you don't even get all of what they have anyways. So this one, the King's Mercy, is basically a horrible event also, unless you're a top 150 player. Regular decrees, complete daily jobs to get tournament points. Whenever this one comes up, what I do is I go down to my daily jobs and all those different things that I can go through and hit add on and I have like 479 uh, saved up, I'll go through and hit use, 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 claim, 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 claim with the VIP status on. So this is something to where if you buy a lot of packages, then this event you should be able to save up your daily jobs for and use them all at once. So that's actually not that bad a one. Um, capital challenge, if you're not going through and like drastically upgrading your city, it doesn't really matter. Silver Rush. Yeah, this one is for obtain silver to get tournament points. If you have a level 40 city and above, you're probably your like village, or I'm sorry, your, um, your mansions are creating so much silver that you're going to go through and you're going to place in this. If you're not one of those high-level players, it's not really worth it. I'm sorry. I hate to keep on saying this and everything, but if you're playing this game, you already know you can only spend your money in so many different places before it just gets too expensive for you. So don't worry about a lot of these events. That's the only reason why I'm doing this video. The quest for chess, this is something to where like, if your clan is doing a lot of higher-level chess... Obtain chests and open them to get tournament points. Chests obtained for monsters provide points. Chests obtained for crypts, blah, 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 blah. And the better the chest, the better the reward on this one, sadly enough. So if you're not one of the top 150 players, don't really worry about this. Power points and everything. What ends up happening is that under your VIP status, so up here where, and I'll like try and show you. Where it has this little symbol and everything for the VIP status, you click on it, right? Let me go through and angle this up because that is all loop. When you go through and you hit the add button or whatever, granted, I have a lot of these right now. I don't even know what exactly it's going to do. Like, oh, it's adding me crowns. That's cool. So I'm getting more crowns. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to have VIP for the rest of my life with this. Because of the fact that I already maxed out my VIP points, all these different crowns are basically adding to my... I have 2,745 days of... I'm sorry, oh no, that's the amount of points. Oh, that's going to suck. Wow. Okay, hold on. Let me see. I got to try this out. Let's extend out the amount of time. Dang! 370 days worth of crowns. <laughs> I'm going to be in VIP status for the rest of my life. Okay, that's cool. And then I have, what, one of the seven-day one? Yeah. Complete redonkulous, guys. The one-hour one I have 29 of. Yeah, I'm VIP for the rest of my life. That's fine. So whenever you have something like this, just save out the power points for basically like one of these, but then again, don't save them up if you have the ability to increase your VIP because then your VIP is like sitting there at a lower level when you can have it at a higher level and get better bonuses and everything from it. Tar Mastery, if you have it to where you're going to obtain prizes and everything, like, you know, obtain Tar to get tournament points. Yeah, if you do your shopping in the Triumphal Challenge area or shopping in other different areas, you could get a whole lot of tar that way, so that would be about the best way in order to do this. But like I said before, if you're not one of the top 150 players, don't worry about it. Battle training, this is for your if you're like uh, getting higher level troops and everything, you get more points for it. If you're not one of the top 150 players, don't worry about it. Blessing of the Gods, uh, re uh, revive troops in the temple to get tournament points. This one, you're going to probably have a good epic level event that's attached to this, and so that would be a good way to do this. So if you notice, guys, when we're looking at all these different events and everything, there is a lot of stuff that you could just, frankly, just ignore the living heck out of. Like, don't waste your time on it. 
All right, let's go on over to my other account because there is a few events over there that we haven't talked to or talked about on here. And I want to show you guys. Let me load, load, load. Internet, don't fail me now. You're my boy, Blue. If anybody's watched Old School or whatever, yeah, love that movie. All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sales, yay. Level R times eight building resources. If you find this under the Beowulf Kingdom, oh, yes. It's very, very nice. Okay, so now we got to go to where we're looking at our events. Okay, so these two are very, very specific to the actual Beowulf thing, so I'm not going to go through and talk about that. But, yeah, you get the point. Doomsday, crap. Shadow Invasion, absolutely love this. This one is to where you can send your captain and three of your... I'm sorry, your hero and three of your captains in order to go through and fight in Shadow Invasion. And every single point that you get goes towards your CP, so your Conquest Points. And all these prizes, most of them sent around your Conquest Points. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. So a lot of different, you know, conquest points can be obtained through this one event. I really like Shadow Invasion. I like it more than Clash of Thrones or, you know, uh, Clash of Kingdoms. Because this way you don't want to upset people in order to be able to gain in this game. Like, if you have a tour where you're pissing other people off by attacking them and everything, then they're going to come back and attack you and you're trying to defend, but you gain uh, like hardly any CP from defense. So it's all, as Clash of Thrones and Clash of Kingdoms is only good if you're basically attacking a lot. But Shadow Invasion is a great way in order to earn conquest points so you can get your army modernization up, and then after you do that, do your monster boost up, and then after you do that, then do your specialists. I usually weigh on my specialists for the very last. So Shadow Invasion, absolutely well worth the money. Uh, Triumphal, we already talked about. Closing the gap, this is usually attached to one of the times that you're going to basically be fighting a lot. And as you can see, I'm definitely going to be fighting a lot because it's Shadow Invasion. I'll do that tomorrow. Clash for the Throne. Here is the way to do Clash for the Throne and have it to where you can get in the top 100, and you don't have to die a lot. What you do is you find a really high-level player, and you basically message them ahead of time, and you're just like, hey, do you mind if I go through and attack you? And a lot of times you'll be surprised that most of the high-level players, they don't mind it, because they really don't get hurt that much because of it. You're not going to do that much damage, and then they'll just revive their player or their armies with silver, and they usually have a ton of silver. So, Clash for the Throne, aim for the highest level player that you can find that is not in your clan. Go through and send them a message, hey, do you mind if I attack you and everything? And most of the time, they're going to say yes. Now, granted, you are going to die. So, if you don't have gold, that's going to suck and everything. But, you could also go through and attack them and just, like, not revive your guys. That basically died. So, therefore, Clash for the Throne is a great way to get conquest points. Conqueror's Revival, we already talked about this. You go through and you fight and you die and you revive the guys. You get conquest points out of this. Uh, thirst for Battle, not top 100. Don't worry. If it's uh, Summon Mastery, if it's not a captain that you really need, don't worry about it. But when you do need that uh, captain, go through and do three Elite Summons times 10. Castle Development, not top 100. Don't worry about it. Armageddon is kind of a good one because it allows you to upgrade your uh, hero and everything. And if you have Spyta or Spya Togor or whatever, the guy that like looks like this angry dude up here at the very top, that's Spya Togor. He is absolutely great on Armageddon because whenever he's fighting by himself, he gets a plus 50% bonus to his strength. Therefore, really good guy in order to basically go through and have let me get that a little bit closer for you guys. There we go. All right. Then, um, Pursuit of Evolution. It's good in order to gain dragon orbs. Just make sure you do the event that's attached to it, the epic level one. Great hunt. Remember, if you're not a really great clan that everybody's actually buying in, and a higher level clan at that point, then Great Hunt is not even well worth it. 
Mortal Essence is great. Some of the mastery where I talked about. Arachne is awesome. Please use that for Valor. Hellforge. I absolutely love Hellforge. And the reason why is because of the fact that you can gain as the things that you claim or whatever. And then you go into the shop. You can basically go through and get armor that is normally way outside of your materials means to where you don't have a lot of materials. But you can go through and fight this guy and get a lot of armor out of it, which you will therefore go through and shop and everything. So I did a video over this one. I highly suggest that everybody check it out, the Hellforge one. Just type in uh, Total Battle Hellforge and then look for the one that's done by me, Raven's Teacher, and you'll see it pop up. All right, so that's that one. The only bad thing about Hellforge, though, you do not gain any valor from fighting this guy. Kind of like the Snake of Ragnarok, you don't get any valor from going through and fighting this big, huge dude with, uh, like, the Anvil or Mace or whatever. Ragnarok, absolutely well worth it. Ruthless Slaughter, really good if you're trying to do stupid stuff where you could just go through and revive your army with silver. Like Heroics or whatever. Ancient Treasures, absolutely hate it. Build your temple at the highest level. Let somebody that is top five in your uh, clan and everything go through and deal with it. They could probably fight this temple a heck of a lot easier and lose a lot less troops because of it. And the amount of silver that's lost by the clan will be way less than if all the low-level players are trying to go through and fight it. Rise of the Ancients, it starts to get to where this becomes ridiculous and everything, so it's not even that great of an event. Beast Slayer, not top 150. Scientific Progress, not top 150. Crypt, uh, Crypt Raiders, this one's pretty good as long as all of your clan is participating and everything. It's a good one. Call of Duty, not top 150. Warrior Games, not top 150. Not top 150. Hammer and Anvil, probably not top 150. King's Mercy, not top 150. Regular Decrees. This one, a regular Decrees, that's where your daily jobs or whatever. Save those up. Capital Challenge, not top 150. Silver Rush, not top 150. Warriors. If you're not in the top 150 and everything, like when I say if you're not in the top 150, you're not top 150. That means that if you are in the top 150, play them. If you're not, probably don't need to worry. Uh, war, uh, war tools, not top 150. <sighs> Quest for chess. The higher the level player you are, the you know better chess that you get. The more points that you get. Power points. Use those whenever you get them. Or if you know that there's a big gap in between one level and the next level, then you could save them up for this. But if you're close to being able to go up another level and VIP, just use them. Tar Mastery, if you're not top 150. Battle Training, if you're not top 150. Blessing of God, not top 150. And Gold Rush, if you're not top 150. Or if you're not spending a ton of money in this game, don't worry about it. So those are all the events that basically this game has to offer. I think there's some other ones that basically pop up kind of like autumn fest or whatever key thing behind it is whenever they pop up in your list there will be the ones that say oh it happens in this amount of days or whatever or these are the ones that are active and we have these are how many days until it's active and then you have the ones to where eh, it might pop up at any point read the descriptions figure out whether or not they're actually worth it for you and like i said a lot of these are geared towards people that are competing for the highest, most prizes in the entire game. The people that are the creme de la creme, the highest level players. But if you're not in the top 200 players or not top 150, there's no point in you playing them. So don't waste your gold or your resources going through and trying to hit up these different ones. It's not worth it. So that is about all that I'm going to be doing for this video, guys. I hope that you really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, you can hit the like button. You can subscribe. Um, if you want to leave a comment, I really do appreciate the comments as far as like, hey, you know, why don't you do a video over this? Or, hey, can you talk about this? Or whatever. You can also find me in the game by going through and looking in Kingdom 113. And my name in there is Lefinen, L E F. I-N-A-N. -N. If you want to in the game, go through and hit me up and everything like that. Be like, you know, hey, I you know watched your video or hey, can you help me with this or whatever. Guys, I really enjoy helping other people out. That's the reason why I'm doing these. It's not to go through and be like, you know, 
oh, look at how great my city is and yours sucks. You know, no, nothing like that. Look at the uh, like videos, go through and hit me up, have it to where I can help you out so that you can get better in this game and that therefore you can have more fun with this game. When people are having fun, I'm a lot happier. So you guys say you have a good day. Other than that, that's all I got for you and I will talk to you all later. Bye.